You know, not long ago, Fort Collins was just a sleepy little old-fashioned college town. In fact, it hasn't been that many years ago that this old fire engine was online at the Fort Collins Fire Department. But a lot of changes have taken place in the last few years. Fort Collins has grown leaps and bounds, and a variety of industries have flourished here. The city has gained a beautiful new Woodward Governor plant. Teledyne Water Pick has expanded their facilities. Hewlett Packard has built a new structure. And Anheuser-Busch is in the process of constructing a new Budweiser brewery. That's just to name a few. Naturally, with all these new industrial plants coming in, the population has grown. This has put a strain on city services. Parks and Recreation, the utilities, the police department, and yes, the fire department have all expanded. Prior to 1981, Fort Collins and the surrounding area was serviced by two fire departments. Poudre Valley Fire Department serviced the rural areas. The Fort Collins Fire Department only ran within the city limits. In 1980, Chief of the Poudre Valley Fire Department, Chuck Willis, and Chief of the Fort Collins Fire Department, John Mulligan, got together with the Poudre Valley Fire Board and the City Council. The wheels started rolling, and after all was said and done, the two entities had been combined as one, which is now called Poudre Fire Authority. Since the merger of the two departments, we have replaced several pieces of apparatus. Our truck companies now have a new 85-foot aerial platform manufactured by Ladder Towers Incorporated. This is a beautiful and extremely useful piece of equipment utilizing the latest technology. Engines one, two, and six have been replaced with the most modern and up-to-date 1,250 gallons per minute pumpers. Also, since Station 6 is the hazmat station, Engine 6 has all the latest hazardous materials capabilities built into it. While we are on the subject of Station 6, groundbreaking ceremonies for new Station 6 were on August 28, 1985. And now we are eagerly awaiting the grand opening. Last but not least is our shiny brand new 1800 gallon water tanker which was just put into service. Video on back in quarters. Yes, a lot of changes have taken place in the past few years. Poudre Fire Authority has become known throughout the United States as one of the most progressive and innovative fire departments. A number of our personnel have impressive credentials. Chief John Mulligan is chairman of the International Association of Fire Chiefs on Hazardous Materials and also a member of the Uniform Fire Code Committee. Chief Chuck Willis is past president of the Missouri Valley Conference of the International Fire Chiefs. We have several other specialists who travel throughout the nation lecturing and teaching. Four of these specialists are Randy Brugman, Glenn Levy, Mark Springer, and Gene Chandler are instructors for the National Fire Academy in Emmitsburg, Maryland. We have several other instructors who teach fire science at the college level. So you can see, Poudre Fire Authority is not just another fire department waiting for a fire and reading the books. We're working to prevent those fires and helping to write the books. But I'm sure a lot of you are aware of many of the improvements that have taken place in Fort Collins and our fire protection district. And we should all feel proud of these accomplishments. But now I want to make you aware of something you may not know. Something that's extremely lacking in Poudre Fire Authority. Something that has not only not kept pace, but has regressed something that it is vital to the continued growth and productivity of Poudre Fire Authority. And that something is a training facility.
Have you ever heard the expression, practice makes perfect? Well, there's a lot to that old cliche. It's true, to learn and maintain a degree of skill, people have to train and practice. Preparation is the very backbone of any endeavor, and fire departments are no exceptions. As you well know, firefighting is an extremely dangerous occupation. In order to learn and practice firefighting skills, it is necessary to do this in the most controlled and safest environment possible. A well-designed and constructed training ground such as this can provide this necessary environment. Many fire departments, including ours, have used old buildings donated by the public as burn houses. In most cases, these old hulks are dangerous just to be in. Then add the presence of fire and firefighters trying to learn, you're asking for trouble. Such was the case on January 26, 1982, when two Boulder, Colorado firefighters lost their lives. It began this morning as a routine training exercise for a Boulder Fire Department company. Four men were trying to put out a fire in an old abandoned shack on the northwest end of Boulder. But about 10.15, disaster hit. Fire officials aren't sure yet, but they believe an explosion ripped through the shack. Two men made it out alive, were cut from their burning clothes, and transported to Boulder Community Hospital. Two others died, apparently killed instantly, with no chance of getting out. The bodies of the dead men were removed from the rubble early this afternoon. Other firefighters could only watch and grieve over the loss of their friends. In 1973, when I came to work for the fire department, we trained by using burn houses donated by the public, apartment complexes, schools, and this old training tower built in 1935. The old tower has since been torn down when the new city hall was constructed. In 1975, the city decided to discontinue use of the Fort Collins power plant. So they let the fire department use it as a training facility. However, Light and Power was still using the north end of the building as a substation. And on the east side were the shops for the sheriff's office, which restricted apparatus practice. And on the south side were the railroad tracks, which the railroad claimed that us spraying water towards their right of way was weakening the railroad tracks. So the power plant never really worked out. That's right, we're back on the streets again. Training at the DMA apartment complex, the May DNF, the Denver stores, or anywhere we can get permission. This was okay eight or ten years ago when Fort Collins was smaller, but today it's just too chaotic. We can't catch hydrants and lay hose near the complexes where we train because of the traffic problems which is not only dangerous to civilian drivers, but to fire personnel as well. Laying hand lines from the engines for advancing up ladders or stairways is extremely hazardous because it generally means crossing sidewalks, which is dangerous to civilian foot traffic. If we have to continue to train on the streets as we are now, we are chancing the possibility of personal or property liability claims. What this all boils down to is, is if we want to maintain the standards to which our department has elevated itself and our citizens have come to expect, then we need a proper place where we can train, practice, and hone our skills. This is such a place. This facility belongs to Loveland. It's a very adequate training ground. It has all the essentials. A tower for ladder practice and high-rise evolutions. A smokehouse for search, rescue, horizontal ventilation and extinguishment. A half roof for vertical ventilation practice. A burn pit for flammable liquid fires. And an engine pumping facility for training and recertifying driver operators. 
It also has plenty of hydrants for an adequate water supply. It's a very nice facility. Denver, Colorado has a facility similar to this one. I had the pleasure of visiting recently during their recruit graduation exercises. Let's see how they put their training complex to use. in people that you don't get out of the book. It's very nice. This is a, a facility that allows you to do some work on uh, high-rise kinds of problems as well as do live fire problems, I think, with good control and good safety. you think Fort Collins will ever have a facility similar to this? Well, we sure hope so. I think uh, that's a project uh, that we need to work on, and it's, uh, I think, a need for the department. I just asked Chief Mulligan if he thought we'd ever have anything similar to this in Fort Collins. What do you think about that? Yeah, I'm sure we will. We're right on the threshold. You think you know? there's a need for it now? Well, yeah, we've always had a need, you know. It's not only this type of training, it's ongoing training. When you've got to train in high schools and empty college dorms, it's a little bit different from the facility they have here. A city of 85 or 90,000 people uh, without something similar to this, is, uh, I think we're missing the boat. Well, there you have the long and the short of it. If Poudre Fire Authority is to continue to be a skillful and productive department, then a training facility is a must. PFA is a young and aggressive department, and we like to be ready to do whatever the job calls for. No, let me rephrase that. We have to be ready to do whatever the job calls for. And in order to do that, we need a place to train where we can train skillfully and safely. Thank you. <laughs>